Okay, uh, thank you, Pastor Epson, or I call him Epson Da. Um, yeah, today, today we are going to talk about um, the fruits of the Spirit. And as I was meditating on this topic of what I was going to talk, um, yeah, God actually led me to, to kind of like um, go through, go through um, something that comes, with, comes before the fruit of the Spirit. And so uh, we're going to talk about that today. Um, and yeah, it's looking at the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, there, there are the, the Bible specifically mentions the passage that we are going to study specifically mentions uh, nine fruits, right? right? Love, joy, peace, um, kindness, goodness, patience, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yeah, yeah. Is that nine? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, and it would be great to to kind of like dive into these things, but I really feel like because this is something that is. A fruit of the Holy Spirit. I really felt uh, as I was preparing for this, I gave it all to the Holy Spirit. I said, "God, like have your way, like kind of like speak what you want to speak today." All right. Um, to go to uh, first before we speak about this um, to, to the Bible talks a lot about about uh, the Bible uses a lot of parables about tree about trees um, whenever we in the Bible if you go through the Old Testament to the New Testament uh, we always see the prophets um, and also we always see Jesus talking talking about trees talking about good trees and, and the trees that bear good fruit um, trees that bear bad fruits, and there is this there is this amazing um, amazing imagery uh, associated with trees in the Bible. Um, Psalm one two three it says it talks about uh, this person. Blessed is the man who whose delight is in the law of the Lord, uh, who meditates on this law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. You know, we've we've all heard this psalm a lot of times, um, but I really want us to focus on verse verses two. He says, "A blessed man is like a good tree that is planted by the waterside, that is always nourished, always, um, always fed by the word of the Lord, who who keeps the who keeps the word of the Lord and meditates on its day and night." Right, um, and that is what we are going to have our basis on today is. It's just that nourishment from from the Word of God uh, to be able to to walk out in bearing the fruits of the Spirit. So yeah, this is like this is this is one of the imageries that I always think of whenever I think of fruits um, of the Holy Spirit. I'm always led to I'm always challenged to think of the whole tree as a whole. Think of my life um, as a tree. Um, that is that's planted is it am i being nourished properly am i am i taking am i in the right source is my source uh, aligning with what god has for me is 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 what is my fruit does it align with with the word of god and and how the word of god tells my fruit should be so can we move on um jesus jesus then if then when we when we come to the new testament um, a lot of times Jesus refers to, to trees um, in John 15 5 to 8 uh, we don't have to read but in summary it, it talks about Jesus talks about him being the vine um, him being the vine and, and we are the branches as long as we are grafted in him as long as we draw our nourishment from him um, he says that that we will bear much fruit you know like we will bear much fruit but the idea the whole basis of the idea and even in the Old Testament was to to, to be in union uh, with God's word with what God was saying and even Jesus is saying that the very same thing that is is that he is the vine that we have to be uh, like those branches that are grafted in him and I'm gonna talk about today what what it means to, to be grafted in him what what my life also looked like um, in this process of, of being remaining in the vine as Jesus says remain in the vine 
Yeah, these are the fruits. We know about this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law, right? Um, can you go down? Yeah. So before we move on, I want to talk about something that, that, that has been very helpful to me in my life. Um, I remember doing my DTS discipleship training school here in Hong Kong. And I remember uh, there was this teaching from, Lord, uh, from Darlene Cunningham. She is, she's the wife of Lauren Cunningham. They're the founders of, of YWAM back in the 1960s. And this is something that really, really spoke to me. And this is not the whole, I've just summarized it. There is more details into it, but I've summarized it in a way that it's short and we can all take something out of it. So, uh, Darlene basically says is, if our life is like a tree, um, our roots, the roots that we have um, under the ground that people don't see are our beliefs. What do we believe in our hearts? What do we truly believe deep down inside of us? You know, and that, how is, what are those roots affected by? The roots are affected by the soil that it's drawing its nutrition from. Um, what is the soil that we are using to, to, draw, to draw nutrition from? And that shapes what we believe in our hearts, deep down in our hearts. And for each person, that belief uh, may be different. It, it might not seem like that on the surface, but only God knows what's in the heart, right? So that is where we form our beliefs of what we truly believe in our hearts. Um, out of those beliefs come our values. If like there are what are things that we value, there are certain principles that come out of our beliefs that we that we follow or that we look up to or that we try to adhere to. You know, those are principles that we follow. And out of those principles come the fruit. The fruit is actually the end. Um, it's just uh, what the way a person behaves, or the, often the times the way I behave or I act or I talk is often is often on the surface it would be it would be very quick to kind of see like whether that's a bad fruit or a good fruit but it always stems down deep down inside to, to what I really believe in my heart um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this uh, a bit so before we uh, I know Epson told you that we will go into talking about fruits of the spirit in the coming days um, but I really felt Holy Spirit laid this on my heart to, to talk about our roots to talk about uh, where we are drawing our nutrition from. Is it, is it, are we basing our beliefs from what people say, what the world says, or are we basing our beliefs in, in what the Bible tells us to do, you know? Um, for example, in my life, um, there was uh, the, uh, one of the fruits that I've, I've seen um, really, really grow in my life, and, and I'm thankful to God, is, is faithfulness. Uh, and one of the reasons was because ever since I was a kid, small kid, um, my mom would always, always tell to me the stories about about how how people in the Bible were faithful, were faithful to faithful in the little. Um, uh, one of the stories that I always remember is is um, the the three the three servants with the talents, right? Like um, two of them would would be faithful in what they had and. And that is how, and how that is how they, they would work out towards their master. That is what I, that's what I grew up with. And um, one of the things that my mom would always tell me is, you know, like she would always uh, remind me that everything that we have comes from God. That was one thing that was very prevalent in my, in my childhood, that she would speak that truth to me. And she would use stories in the Bible to, to show, to, to reflect to me stories about David, stories, um, stories, in the Bible about David, how David was just a, a shepherd boy, he had nothing, but how he in the end went on to become the king of Israel, to become the lion from which Jesus would come, you know, those promises came to be, and and my mom would always say that, it is it is even in the little, because he was faithful, he was faithful to God um, one of the ways that this was reflected is, is through my finances um, ever since I was a kid my mom would always teach me to, to like through 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 the word that hey we we need to pay our tithes uh, what it means to, to pay our so that was ingrained in me since I was a kid it's like if I get a pocket money of, of ten bucks to go and eat something my mom would always try to encourage me hey separate separate like your one ten even though you know not to be legalistic but just to, to just to get that principle into me that what we have belongs to the Lord and, and that is and that is one way that we can please the Lord is by saying, Hey God, whatever I have is yours, here's here's my offering. So um, and recently she reminded me of the story when I think I was around nine or ten, I don't know. And then 
I had saved up around 500 Indian rupees, which in that time in India was quite quite a good amount. Um, and I had saved that up to, to buy something, and I remember one time um, there was this preacher who came to our church, and uh, he was a missionary, and he, he, he preached, and then, and then it really touched the people. But the pastor, I think, at the end kind of also said that, like, you know, like, we, we want to bless him, so like we, we, we want to offer offer something to him, and like if God is calling you to offer something to him, like in terms of finances, you could do that. And I remember as a little boy, uh, <coughs> I told my mom that I had this that though it's not a piggy bank, but in India you have those earthenware pots where I used to put all the money. I I said I want to give all of this to to this this guy. And my mom recently reminded me like two days ago about this story, you know, and and. And that, and seeing how I was faithful in that, now when I see as my life as a missionary, I've been so blessed to, to have God provide for me through His people, through His people. Now I can see um, what that what I've sown, I harvest now. And I'm so grateful for that. You know, that is one thing. That's one of the good fruits that I've seen in my life, um, you know. And and today as, I, as I'm sharing, I don't want this to just be a theological thing because it's more than that. Holy Spirit has to be applicable to our hearts, to our lives. Um, what I'm about to share is well, something that I've struggled with um, in the past. And I, as I was coming in the MTR today to, to church, I was like, God, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't want to even preach today. And then, and, then, and then I was like, I was really nervous. And I felt like the, I was asking the Holy Spirit, but like, have your way. You know, like, I, I, am, I, I don't know how to do this. And then he just said, I felt like he said at that time in the MTR, I said, I felt he said, get down on your knees and, and just start worshiping me. I will take away all fear and all shame. And I was like, what now? <laughs> I was like, and that, that thought just kept coming to me and my heart was really burdened. And so like, I was like in the MTR, I'm like in, I'm reaching Shanghuan. And then, so I'm like, okay, God, then I, I go to the end boogie, the last boogie that has the least amount of people. But I was like, okay, I'm gonna obey you. And, and I just knelt down. I knelt down in the MTR, in the train as I was coming, and I said, God, have your way. And when I did that, I just felt this such an overwhelming sense of peace and, and love as I was coming um, to the church, you know. And that's what the Holy Spirit is, that's to be obedient to Him. Mm -hmm. um, in my college days, I, I, there, was a, there was a point in time I struggled a lot with pornography um, in the sense of like, so it, it had become almost normal to me because I was in the university um, sharing the dorm with like you know four other guys and then uh, and all of them are non-christians and I'm a Christian but I'm still as sinful as them so it would, what that would mean is like it would be normal to it would be a normal thing considered normal to talk vulgar it would be normal to, to put on something on your computer and just have a laugh about it and, and, and kind of give in to these sinful desires and I knew that that was wrong at that point in time but at the same time my flesh would find excuses to kind of normalize it, kind of become like, oh, it's it's okay, it's okay, it's not affecting, it's not hurting anybody else, you know, it's not, I'm not hurting anybody, so so it's okay, and that is the, and that's a lie that the enemy put in my mind when I was going through college. It, that's my beliefs were were um, it was wrong. The belief that I had in my heart, my my thinking process was, what I'm doing does not affect anybody else. So it's not, it's not so wrong, you know? And that is what I would say to myself to kind of justify my behavior. So if you could see like on the outside, you will see like four guys hanging out, just talking vulgar stuff and, and just looking at stuff. And that's just the actions. That's just the fruit that you see, but uh, that's, that's not the root of it. You know, the root of it was my belief that, that because it's not affecting anybody else, it's okay to do it. And, and God really had to, to bring me out when I when I came out of out of my college, and um, I knew I was wrong. By by the time I was going to college, it had almost become um, something that that was normal and very addicting in the sense of like it was just every day, almost every you would come back from from college, you would come back from a university, and you just have guys in your room like drinking and, and just like looking at stuff and stuff like that and it would just be so normal that I didn't know how severe it affected me until I actually came out and then I remember 
um, coming to God about this. I think it was at a camp or something like that, or maybe even doing my DTS. And it's been a process. And then God really challenged me to to reshape my beliefs, not my actions, not my. I mean, obviously, it, it shows in my actions. But God really challenged me to go deeper than that into what I believe. And what I believe is, I started I started finding that as I started taking in good nutrition. My nutrition when I was in college was from my atmosphere, was from the people around me, um, was from what you think, what you think is right or what you think is right and you know like society and like okay, okay we think it's normal to do all of these things. So that was my nutrition, that was my soil. But God really challenged me to, to come back to the Bible, to come back to, to, the, to the soil of truth that, that, would, that would change my belief. You know, the Bible, I, then I started reading the Bible. I, started, I really started asking God and, and I, went to, I, I went to some people and uh, went into this time of just confession and, and also being accountable. And um, God really started reviving me in, in me a love for the Word of God where He talks about in Romans and Corinthians how, how even if you look at someone, you know, with, with, uh, with the lavicious eyes, it's, it's, it's sin, it's sin, it's adultery. And, and, and those truths were hard for me to take, but those were truths. Some of the truths in the Bible, it's hard. The soil that we, that, we, that we want to sink our roots into, sometimes it's hard. It's difficult to go deep, but those are the truths. And, and I can't deny that God's truth is absolute. It's not relative. It's not right for you and wrong for me. It's absolute. It's absolute. If God says something is right, then it's right. If God says something is wrong, then it's wrong. And then, and just just this journey of like finding God in the midst of all of my all of my sinfulness. And I remember one verse that that keeps me going even today. Um, whenever I face temptations and stuff like that, and I've come such a far away. And that is in Psalm 119. I think it's in verse nine or ten. Psalm 119, verse nine. I think it says how. And I found this word as I was meditating with God and and, and how to overcome. And that this word says. How does a young man live in purity? He lives by living according to the word. This is what the, what the Psalm says, Psalm 119 verse 9 or 10, I think it is. And it says, how does a young man live in purity? By living according to the word. And I took that to heart because I felt that was, that, that's something that God spoke directly to me. I was reading that and I was like, okay God. And then I just started like crazy in the times of, in times of like growing out of this and growing closer to God. I would just spend hours reading the Word of God. I would do anything it takes to be like, God, I, I, I love you. I love you more. I know that you can satisfy me more than anything else in the world. And I love you. And I want to spend time with you. I would read His Word. I would read. I would make sure that my roots were planted deep down inside the truth. So that is what I want to share to you and almost challenge us today. Is, is We want the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You know, like for us, and I really felt the Holy Spirit say this to me. We want to show love. We want to show patience. We want to show self-control. And um, in my case, the, the testimony I just shared, I wanted to have self-control, but I didn't want to deal with the roots. A lot of times we want to have good fruits, but we don't want to deal with the roots that are underneath that have... Um, hey, hey, Nathan, what's up? Um, yeah, a lot of times we, we want to have good fruits, but we don't want to deal with the roots that are making our fruits bad. So I really want this to, to take that into heart is, is the Holy Spirit is, He wants us, He wants us to, to not just change the fruits that we have, but to go deep down. He wants to change the way we think. Paul says, be renewed by the transforming of your mind. You know, Paul, when you read Paul's text about renewing of, of the mind, it's so beautiful. He says, we need to be renewed by the transformation of our mind. And how does that transformation in our mind happen? By living according to the word, by sinking our, our, our roots deep inside the truth of the word of God. Um, today, a lot of problems arise because, because the world also is focused on fruits. You know? The world also wants to be seen as peaceful. The world, the people who are not Christians also want to show that they are kind, that they are loving. And they can be that. They can be, they can be your parts of good fruits. But where does that, that motivation come from? Where does that root come from? Today, whenever I talk to friends who are not Christian, um, they are kind of like, you know, like what's right is right for you. What's wrong is wrong for you. I hear that a lot. Whether it comes in, in when we talk about, you know, like, like even for example, with, with 
with the Hong Kong protests. Now, I don't want to be political. That is not my agenda here, please. I, I'm, I'm just trying to share in the sense of like when I talk to some of my Chinese friends, and, and we have this we have this open talk of like how it's going on, and and you know while and they they kind of sometimes ask me difficult questions like what would Jesus have done and stuff like that, and I'm like you know what when I look at Jesus' life, he did stand up for what is right. But he never was violent. He was. He was. He always did it in love. He always submitted. He he did it in love. And Jesus always tells us to to love our enemies, love those who persecute you. You know. And and as hard as that might be to take, and that is the truth. That is the truth we need to, to sink our roots into. Um, one of the fruits that I've seen in this season that I've grown a lot is is um, patience. You know, like patience is one of the fruits of the spirit. Um, but it wasn't until I, I dealt with some of the roots that I could start bearing, I could start seeing the Holy Spirit bear the fruit of patience in my life. Um, one of the roots that I was struggling with when it came to, came to patience is, is, is because I had started basing my identity on what I could do, so what, what I could achieve. And that was my belief, is the more I achieved, the more important I become, or, or, or my status is, is, is better, whether that's in ministry or in, in work when I was working. You know, that was my that was my belief. And God really shaped, challenged me to, to be like, to, to start putting my roots not into how I perform, but actually of how loved I am as a child of God. Um, to, to meditate on verses of Psalm 139 that says that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, to meditate on verses of Jeremiah 1 5 that says I knew you before you were in your mother's womb and and verses like that that really solidified my identity in Christ of who I am as a child of God and when I started doing that I really it's it, it's strange but when I started really focusing on that when I started focusing on on my beliefs and and really taking my beliefs from what the word has to say about me as a child of God I started being patient not just with myself because I would be impatient with myself if I couldn't get something done I would be really hard on myself and I would be hard on other people as well I would be like why can't we get this done and even in ministry um, and when I but when I started really sinking deep into the truth of God of, of knowing that regardless of the results I am loved I'm a loved child of God God cares for me he pursues me and his grace is abundant for me that just helped start me being even when things would go wrong I would just be like it's okay let it go God has the things in control not that I'm not saying that totally hands off but like that kind of a peace and that would also help me to be patient with other people because now I know that they are a child of God that regardless of the mistake they make or regardless of how even if they don't perform well that it doesn't change the fact that they are valued by God they are loved by God and to be able that God has lent so much grace to me that I can lend grace to others and that is something that I, I started growing in, um, in, in in the fruit of patience so that is what I really want to talk about you know it's like where where do where do our um, where do our beliefs lie how how deep are our roots centered in Christ in the Word of God um, and these should and, and Epson was talking about love you know we we're gonna talk about love and joy one of the things that I've started learning about love is love is also um, doing the right thing or saying the right thing even if it's hard even if it's hard if you love someone you will always say you will you want the best for them you want the right thing for them you know and that is those are things that we that 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 we can take away um, so I don't want to talk much today so I just wanted to bring uh, this thing out so like what what are our beliefs you know where 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 are our roots in how you everybody in this room you know where your relationship with Christ is you know I don't I'm I, I'm not the judge of that nobody is no pastor is only Christ can judge you he knows he knows how he knows how deep uh, your roots are in him and today if you really desire and I really want to say this like if we really desire to see this fruits uh, blossom in our life, to see the fruits of love, of joy, of peace, of patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, if we really want to see these fruits blossom in our life, we have to check our roots. We have to check what do we believe in and why do we, do we believe in Christ because He is only there in times of trouble or He's there to give us a promotion? And these are hard questions, but 
to really ask us, what do I really believe in? And some of the truths of, of God is like, where is my nourishment coming from? Am I taking out enough time to just spend with Him, to be still in His presence, to read His Word, to spend time with Him, to kind of like take my resource from God and not from the world, not from what people say. Um, so yeah, that is what I want to leave you with, is, is just that the fruits will come in our life. That, that is, the fruits are almost like a byproduct of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I really feel the Holy Spirit saying that what we need to desire is, is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Um, we, yes, it is good to see fruits, and we will see that. That is, that is a given. The more the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life increases, the more your relationship grows closer with God. Those fruits are super evident. It, you don't have to worry about them. What we need to worry is, God, I want to align myself with you. I want to, to grow closer to you. I want to extend my roots deep into, into your soil, deep into your heart. That is where I want to be. And, and even as we set out from this month on to talk about fruits of the Holy Spirit, I really want us to take this Sunday today to kind of ask God, where are we? Where, how deep are our roots in God? Are we taking the time to to really take that nourishment that our soul really needs. And where our roots are, are there bad roots? Are there some beliefs that, that are not aligning with the Word of God and we are keeping on letting those beliefs kind of like fester and it shows in our actions, it shows in our values. Um, so yeah, so today, yeah, just, I want you to be encouraged. And hey, nobody, nobody is, is perfect. We are all in this journey of growing. We, we all keep growing. But our attitude, our heart attitude, our heart motivation is to always be more like Christ. To always be more like Christ. We always have to look forward to Christ and say, God, how can I be more like you every day, every day, every day? Um, you know, and, and uh, for me, now, with where, how God has brought me up, it's, it's amazing to see that I can, I can talk about these things to, to other young men, like, men who are 18, 19, I've seen. Because before in India, when we talk about sexual sins, it's like a tab taboo subject. We, even in churches, we don't talk about it at all. We think like, if somebody gets divorced and it's like totally out in the open, that's that, that is when we have to like, kind of like talk, you know? But like now I can see how God is using um, the journey that he has brought me in to be to be open and vulnerable with, with other young men and be like, hey, I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna, be, help you be accountable. I'm gonna help you bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna walk in that journey with you, um, and I can really see how God has brought me out uh, of that. Um, and and a lot of things. This is this is what I want to share today. Is yes, let's desire the fruits of the Holy Spirit, but let's not forget where our nourishment comes from. Um, so go. Yeah. So what I want to do is now. Um, all, all of our actions, the way we behave and, and what we say and the way we act towards people, the way we generally are, um, it, 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 the belief that we have, the root that we have is always associated with the nature and character of God. It is always has to be, as a Christian, it always has to be connected to the nature and character of God. Um, you know, like, and then can our fruits be good? We, when God says that He is all loving, you know, like, do we really believe that? That He is all loving, regardless of the sufferings that we see in our own life, regardless of the pain that we see in our own life, regardless of the evil around us. Like, do we hold on to that truth that God, yes, you are all loving. That is the character of God. That's the first thing that Satan attacked Adam and Eve. That, and that will always be something that will be the first attack on us, is attacking God's character. It's not attacking you. It will attack what you believe about God's character. Satan always comes to us and tries to attack what we believe. Like for me, when I came to being a missionary, the first thing that I got attacked with is, is God really going to provide for you? Like, are you serious? Come on, like, you've been earning uh, money by yourself and stuff like that. Like, is God really going to provide for your rent and stuff like that? You know, those are, the, it's attacking the character of God. It's not attacking my ability. It's attacking the character of God as a provider and as a father who loves me and who cares for me. So that is what I want you to discuss today is, is there any um, aspect of the nature and character of God? What do you believe? And what do you think 
is something that the enemy tries to attack you in, you know, like, and what is something that you strongly believe about the nature and character of God, and that has um, borne fruit in your life. So the second question is, what kind of fruit does that produce? Like your belief in, in uh, an aspect of, of the nature and character of God, what kind of fruit have you seen that produce in your life? And also, I really want us, I really want us to, to focus in this time. I believe the Holy Spirit is here. And ask God if there are any bad fruits in your life. Like, I do, I do have bad fruits even now. There are other things that, like, I deal with frustration. I get stressed out. I get frustrated easily and stuff like that. Um, so ask God if there are bad fruits in your life. And this is something I want you to do. This is, this is going to, 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 to take time. Is after you ask God what the bad fruit is, which might be very obvious to you, I want you to be able to ask God, what is the root cause of that fruit? What is the belief? What is the belief? What is the way I think that is causing me to have that bad fruit? Do you understand? Ask God, see if there are any bad fruits in your life, and ask God, what is the root cause of it? Um, yeah, and I know this is probably a hard message. It's hard. This is, a, this is a hard message for me to share as well. But um, I really felt before we go into this season of talking about the fruits of the spirit. You know, if you look at. I read the verse of Galatians 5, 20, 23, it talks about all the fruits. But if you read the passage right above it, it talks about a bunch of examples of like bad fruits. It talks about maliciousness, it talks about, um, it talks about you know, like anger, it talks about drunkenness and all of that. It talks about a lot of bad fruits. So today I really feel the Holy Spirit is saying before we go into this month, into the new month of talking about the fruits, to, to really question what we believe and um, that's how we can start to know like how to actually be a good fruit not just not just have a theological idea of like oh yeah yeah it's all about peace and love no not just to have a theological idea but to have a practical implication in our life of what are things that some things that i need to uproot from my life from my roots and what are some things that i need to draw more nutrition from the holy spirit and from the word of god um, so i want us to divide into groups wherever you are maybe of around three three to four people is that okay So you can you can go into groups of three to four people. And um, and I want you and I want you guys to, to be able to discuss these questions. And one thing is as we discuss these questions, um, Please don't feel ashamed or feel fear to share, you know. The enemy wants things to be swept under the rug, to be hidden in the darkness. But the Holy Spirit is somebody who brings things to light. And also, a word for people, when you share with somebody, please don't use that to gossip about them. You know, like, don't, don't use that as something that would hurt them in front of other people. We want to be able to love our brothers and sisters, yeah? So, please go ahead and discuss these questions with your groups. Okay. 